Awesome. Uh, we, sorry, today is Friday, November 10th, 2023. This is uh, the MSU's Ember TSACS meeting. Um, let's start with attendance. I'll start on that side of the room. Michael. Michael Warner, present. Alejandro Casillas, present. William Coates, present. Matthew Rathman, present. Denny, present. Um, Ree? Ree Barco, present online. Thank you, Gabe. Gabe Trujillo present. Sweet. Okay. Given one, two, three, four, five, six, four, seven, seven. Okay. We do not meet quorum at the moment. Yes. Um, I have a quick question. Okay. Tell Kenny, me. Kenny, do you mind telling us who's not here? Um, the person I was currently not here is Kristen, uh, Thomas, Naomi, John, and Paul. All right. Okay. Um, Okay, we we cannot approve this agenda because again we don't meet quorum. So we will do open floor for updates, and we do have a couple uh, agenda items that we would like to talk about on the record. Uh, but other than that, no voting will be done today. Yeah, Fair sweet. Enough. Um, open floor for announce uh, comedian. Yeah, comedian announcements. Um, good question though. Is our advisor here today? I don't know. I don't know. I haven't heard anything from them. I can reach no. out. Will? Can we conduct, well, we can't vote, but can we even do like meetings if there's no advisors present? Um, we can. We can. <clears throat> yes, we can. Um, just not really business oriented. They're just advisors. Oh, there she is. She's right there. She's right there. Where? She just she's in the door on the phone, but she's about to come in. Okay, love it. Yeah, yeah, she's right there. Hi. Hello, Dr. Barone. No, it's okay. It's okay. Sweet. Okay. Um, Dr. Barone, just to catch you up, we don't meet quorum today, so we're gonna do an open floor um for announcements, and then we just have one. Resolution to introduce, but other than that, awesome. Yeah, and then we're gonna send Dr. Simpkins an email about we don't meet quorum. So if he wants to reschedule at like twelve forty-five. Yeah. Okay. So we'll probably be here for a minute. I have some questions and stuff. So. Okay. Sweet. Okay. Uh, open floor for announcements. Um, I have <clears throat> I have a few things actually, and Reed, this might have to do with you. It is coming to my attention through some members of, of administration that, um, and this is in relation to our stipends, that there is in fact a way to withhold a stipend. So up until this point, we've been told that we can't, under no circumstances can the stipends really be touched. And I honestly think that's inhibited a lot of bad behavior from this council. So I think, and this is a question for Ree, uh, I know we have the new accountability structure coming in place, but there's quite obviously two members who have not made their they've made their opposition known they've not showed to meetings that attended committee meetings they've done nothing and i think that goes past the point of no return on your accountability structure and that goes to the judiciary matter and uh, if you need some help crafting this i can tell you this but um there's th i mean i'm thinking of two different ways either stipends are withheld or their emotion or a process is made for them to be kicked off the council because at this point no work's being done and our i mean nothing's happening so okay. I have Dr. Baron uh, with a direct commentary. So just yes. It's off. I had a similar conversation with some folks um, about this exact thing. Please know that we're very aware we're talking about it. And um, how can I say this? Let's talk offline about it and I agree that we do need to codify it probably through whatever mechanisms that is, whether it's through the Constitution or the Accountability Committee, not quite sure. I think somewhere in the Constitution, though, around meeting attendance and things like that as an expectation. Um, I also recall when you all uh, agreed or signed the contract when you accepted your positions that there was language in there about meeting participation attendance those types of things and so it it has been already shared and expressed and we want to just make sure that 
we're referring to those documents too. And I, um, what's the word? I am able to, along with Armando, make that decision about the stipends. Um, but I want to make sure that we are doing it thoughtfully and intentionally, and we can make that call. So just yes. wanted to offer that even before any of this is codified, we're able to make that call. Correct. And it is, it is probably a conversation offline, but like it's a disservice to the students that we don't have quorum today. It's a disservice to us being here that's like these two individuals. I mean, and, and, and it's not just them. There is some very clear attendance issues going on behind this, in the whole council. But I think like the way the stipend model has been treated so far, it has been a very, it, we get bashed for every year. It enables bad behavior because if you're getting paid to keep on doing the bad behavior, then there needs to be a change in that. And I'm going to have those conversations with this council and others. And I think a lot of people and students would agree. So just putting that out there, um, Re, I know I mentioned you. You're you are our judiciary chair, so. Okay, Re, go ahead. I just wanted to add um, the additions and edits that I made, incorporating changes from a couple people, and then you know, adding language that talks about non-compliance. Um, I think you will find, I couldn't find the um, current constitution, but you will see on the second page um, regarding full non-compliance by counselors following these measures taken by the accountability committee toward facilitating restorative justice and reconciliation efforts, next steps encompass. Then you'll see a series of steps that I believe are fair for us to read. And I want to bring this to um, an amendment next week, a, like a formal amendment to be voted upon. And I've, I've created a series of steps that talks also about um, withholding stipend for a period of one month while things are tested, but we fully expect they will, the persons and any non-compliant counselor or counselors will continue contributory work as a full counselor, attending all meetings as required and having a voice, but without the ability to submit or vote for resolutions. That's what I felt was fair. And that is open for, you know, subject to review and consideration by everyone. And um, then I've added a two thirds vote at the end of that month to either give them one more, either say they're, things are reconciled, they've worked hard, or I'm not looking at it right now, but basically there's a choice to um, have another month with stipend suspended for them to work on um, reconciliation, or we vote for expulsion. So those are the things I've put in there and probably against Elise's ideas of what the committee stands for, but I understood from many of you that we wanted more punitive measures added here for this accountability stru structure. And that is after the other work has taken place with restorative justice. And so you read that and I think it is a, it's pretty much what you'd like to see, but I'm happy to take changes. And I've also edited the norms um, that can be a part of this or can be separate, whatever you guys like. Awesome, Mike. Yes, I appreciate it. I just saw this this morning, so my bad for not uh, uh, taking the changes. No, no, it's I okay. Sent, I've sent you the Constitution as well. So, oh, but, thank um, you. I thank like, you. I love what I just heard, so I think it's yeah. by our next steps. So, okay. Awesome. Okay. Um, Ali, do you have any updates you want to share with us? Yeah. So, um, just another little reminder that the budget is up to date. So, if you want to have a sense of idea of how much money your committee has, um, feel free to check that out. And then aside from that, um, we are currently getting to the end stages of finalizing the guidelines and protocols for funding student organizations. Um, we had a budget meeting today, so there was a few extra um, recommendations that we can add or remove onto the procedure and guidelines. So those changes will be made and I believe the final one should be next next week or it should be finalized next week ready to vote. So if we're just to clarify, you are looking for this to be voted on next week? Yes. Yes. OK. Essentially, yes. <laughs> that, that, that's a goal. Yeah. Yes. So, okay. Mike. Add, um, <clears throat> I believe everyone has access to these. 
guidelines and procedures. I believe I've sent them to all. I've been sent them to some members of administration, some members, our advisors, some uh, advisors in CMI. Um, it's a substantial document. It's going to be an amendment to our constitution. It's basically going to wipe out any budgeting before and put the brand new system in. And then the next few weeks, like week, we'll implement it essentially. But um, it's very strict on how our budget is controlled and how we manage it. So be sure to add some comments to it. Um, I'll do all service and I'll resend it again to make sure. But um, our goal is to get this finalized next week. Um, like the judicial or the, the accountability committee, it is a two thirds vote as well. So. Well. Quick question for Mike. Um, when you were writing this and helping Alejandro as well, um, was uh, transparency something that was in mind when writing this? I haven't read it yet, but I will read it. I just wanted to hear your. I can echo that as someone who's not part of that committee. So um, the meetings for the budget are open. We all get notifications for the budget committee meetings. Um, so that is recorded. The whole process that we did this morning, because I was there for uh, the annotating and some of the modifications and some of the language we we discussed, like maybe needed to be a little clear for f future counselors. But we are taking every step to make sure that it is transparent, and not only that, but that it is accessible for everyone coming in. Again, the meeting the meeting is there; it is public, so we're we're good. All right, thank you. Yeah. Oh, uh, OK. Wait, Will, do you have anything, any updates on your side? Um, we haven't met since last meeting, um, okay. but me and Matt are still working on trying to see what we can do about those EBT machines. Um, and other than that, I don't have any other updates, but maybe Matt might want to chime in. Um, so as far as the vending machine or the snap machines, um, Leo, the president of, uh, CCD's student government's kind of spearheading it. Um, he had a meeting this last week with representative from the department of human services, um, have not been able to check in with them about exactly what happened during that meeting. Um, but we'll do shortly and continue moving forward on that. Sweet. Um, so sorry, just going back to the whole budget procedure, please like go and annotate. If, if you guys have time, just go and annotate some things. Um, they have done a really great job and they have worked really, like really, truly hard on making sure this works. But, you know, sometimes we have a perception that they don't. So please go in and just give them some notes. OK, Ali. Yeah, I just wanted to add as well that um, for some of the committees that haven't been using any of their budget, if they don't end up using um, partial of their budget by the end of the semester, they are going to be getting a cut for next semester. So just a heads up. OK, could we make sure that maybe by the end of the week you send them, you send those budget chairs an email just telling them? Yeah, OK, Mike. And yes, I actually have a question. I know Dr. Barone, you made some comments on the procedures. Do you have any outstanding things on those procedures that are like dire for us to kind of be aware of? Because the procedures have been out there for like almost two weeks at this point. Um, every counselor has access to them. I see you, Ree. Huh? Sorry. No, I, I'm telling Ree that I see her. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, they've been out there for two weeks. Um, that's the transparency thing, is that we want, you know, we want feedback, we want advice, all that stuff. Um, because the goal is to get this vote on next week for Thanksgiving. And then, like, you'll give us it'll give us some time to redo the budgets and kind of remake the process, and then write the procedures for like whatever for how it's going to work. So that's my question, Dr. Brown. Did you have any apps? I did see some of your comments. No. Yeah. So I uh, talked to Armando. I met with Dave, and I have not asked Chris Harder, but um, they we talked about it and. Um, they gave me their feedback after I wrote my comments on the document. So we're all in alignment and I know they met with you separately or talked to you separately. So I think we're I'm good. The only person that I have not connected with is Chris Harder. 
just to make sure he has eyes on it too, so I can make sure we're in alignment with policies and procedures of the university. And that, as you all know, the timelines and those things are also in alignment. So as soon as I talk to Chris, I feel comfortable. Um, yeah, with the document as is, um, I read through the whole thing and there was a lot there. I think you all did a really good job. Three. I just wanted to add, as we're talking about budget, I am proposing in this accountability framework for the committee that we set aside a bit of budget to pay for the service of services of the restorative justice um, coalition or committee for their work with us and their ongoing work annually. So just putting that out there. Yeah, Mike. And yeah, um, I'll put that out there too. The way this new system is set up is that uh, once this gets passed, re you will have a you you as chair of the judiciary committee will have a seat on this committee. So it's all the standing committees, which is PR, um, sustainability, uh, judiciary, and then budget chairs, the chair of the committee, plus um, one of the chairs of uh, uh, co-chairs, and then a vice chair. It's made up of five people. And um, what we'll do is we'll probably map out the process. So there's a clear process of how it's going to work. And once the amendment gets passed, we're going to do that process. So we'll spend the first week meeting, discussing, getting advice. Then we'll build the budgets for next semester as like a practice, and then we'll have it revoted on at the end of the semester. So we can do that. Um, most likely, what we're going to do is like reshuffle the budgets as a practice. Like, hey, if you're not using your budget, then we're going to you're going to get a cut. So stuff like that. But uh, Re, you'll have a seat on that committee um, if you stay as judiciary chair. Sweet. OK. Um, Matt. Yeah, I just wanted to bring up a couple updates. Because um, I went to the president's cabinet meeting this week. Um, and it was a lot of information. Um, and to be honest, I don't remember all of it, but the really big ones. Um, is David Fine is running a shared governance task force with the university. Um, and actually before I, I even stepped in to say my piece of it, um, two other people in the cabinet referenced that it was all like directors of departments and no student voices. Um, so we advocated and now we have a option of having someone attend those meetings. Um, I don't know the exact times, but they would meet every two weeks. Um, we did hire the new provost, uh, Laura Neeson, um, which I met with her during her last like interview process and already gave her my card and stuff. So I think she starts in next semester. What? Oh, February. Um, and then there's some meetings coming up around the strategic plan. They have a strategic plan pillars OKRs meeting, which OKRs is objective and key results. On November 30th, between 9 and 11, um, they're going to go over the OKRs for pillars 3, 4, and 5. In December 1st, pillars 1 and 2 um, from 3 to 4.30. Um, and I think we should have some representative from the council join those meetings as well. Because um, especially talking with the transitional group, it sounds like there is some confusion around some of the. Well, you know, that might be slightly separate. That's the AHEC master plan. Yeah. Not our pillars. Yeah, the pillars are for like the student success committee that we. Sorry, Matt, I'm just going to clarify no, something real quick. Uh, yeah, so the pillars are about like the student success um, and engagement. Or I think that's what it's part of. Um, but. That is about how to restructure the curriculum and other areas of the university to get students to be more involved and successful. Um, so I do believe that we should be a part of that. Uh, as the students, we should, our voice should be taken into account. So thanks, my Matt. Because in their update on the pillars, it sounded like everything was within an acceptable realm of being on track um, between all um, five pillars. I have a question. I have a question. What's okay. up, Alejandro? 
Well, this isn't related to what he was saying. It was a different question. So I don't know if you guys. No, I like, hold on. <laughs> I'll get back to you. Okay. Is it to the pillars? No. Okay. Give, it, give me one second. I'll come back to you. Oh, I thought you had a question. Don't. I was just, he had right. a question. Um, and then I didn't get a date, but there's an AHEC open house coming up um, discussing the AHEC master plan. Um, I'll try and find out when, when that is. Um, I also think we should have someone go to that meeting as well. Um, Sweet. And then I do have a couple of dates with the PR committee as well. Okay. For one of the bridges it is also during the president's cabinet meeting, I did share the Rowdy's Corner flyer with everybody, everyone on the cabinet. Um, and I'm starting to um, trying to work with our media. Um, what's one like right down the hall? It's like the campus. Uh, No, the one the ones who do like the like runner and early bird. Campus communications. Yeah. So I'm trying to work with them to get it spread out in the runner and um, the early bird. Um, I flared like all of this building and all the departments here in the and JSSB. Um, getting it up on a few different like digital screens around campus, and I flared most of the main thoroughfare. Still need to reach out to some of the buildings on the outer side of campus. Um, let's see. Um, and then Monday we are tabling from nine to eleven uh, with Aha Week. Um, and we have some like fruits and muffins to bring to the event. Um, we're working on a survey um, and I have a couple different flyers to have at the table. Um, and then after that, our next big event would be food for finals. So I'm going to be working on that resolution in the next week or two. Uh, well, probably by next week so we can try and get it done before fall break. Um, and then next semester, I've been reached out for two different opportunities for events um, that I'll bring up with in my committee and we can hash out more specifically. Um, but partnering with Denver Metro Fair Housing Center uh, to maybe come to campus and talk about housing rights. And Campus Rec reached out um, to see if we wanted to co-sponsor their second annual Rowdy's Picnic. Um, this year though, it was on June 10th. Um, so it sounds like it's gonna be after the spring semester. Okay, I that's good. All. I have, I'll, is it direct to that? Go ahead. Hey, Matt, do you mind setting out like calendar invites for all your events? Because yeah. just make sure they're on our calendars and like you can also see who RSVPs to the events as well. So just send like a calendar block so I can block it in my schedule because if it's not on the calendar, I won't be there. Sort of thing. Okay. So just make sure you send it out to all this. So focus on getting the AHA or I mean, do you want one for AHA Week? All your Monday? events. All your events. Just, all right, just so I'll try and send that done. out later today. Um, once I get the, I can probably send a blank kind of placeholder one for food for finals, um, but I don't really have a schedule for spring at this point. Okay, yeah, sounds good. Alejandro, do you have a, oh, okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Okay, yeah, so this is basically a question for Dr. Brown. Hopefully you can help clarify this, but um, I was looking over the receipts and um, I seen that we got charged a total of $6,000 for a door repair. Um, I reached out to AHEC hoping that they can get a reimburse us for this because as tenants, you know, we shouldn't necessarily be um, paying for this. Um, they ended up telling me that the they the reason why the funds were taken out of student government was because MSU Denver ended up voting on taking those funds out from us. So I kind of just want to see like how that works. Is this related to the handicap, the the accessibility yeah. button? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know about I know about this. I don't know about what you just said about MSU Denver voting okay. to have that um 
what's it called, taken out of your budget. What I can tell you is every area within the Tivoli Student Union, remember we talked about this last year, um, is responsible for paying for their own accessibility door. And that is very annoying and frustrating because AHEC is our landlords and we had a lot of conversations about this, but every area within the Tivoli is responsible for paying for their own door and that accessibility function. And this has gone on, it's happened in the Veterans Center, the LGBTQ Center, CMEI, now Student Government and other, the Care Center, they all have to pay for their own door. AHEC will not pay for it. So that might be why they said that, but I'm not and it is $6,000. And um, before we jump to re, I just want to reference that it is time for public comments. Um, but since it doesn't look like we have anybody online or in person. Yes, Dr. Brown? Yeah, I'm sorry. I have a question before we go to public comment um, related to what you were talking about, Matt. The Student Success Launch Committee did you mention that when you were talking about all of those other things you were talking about? Oh, I did about? not. Um, Can you please talk about that really quickly? Yeah, I'll pull up the email as well. Yeah. And just so you know, those meetings are not set, but we need a representative. That isn't Will. Go. It'll be just one sec. I'm trying to find the email. I also thought that was new business with Dr. Simpkins on the agenda, no? We might be able to ask him some questions, but I think it might be good to bring it up beforehand. Here, I found it now. Thank you. Okay, it is one o'clock. I'm so sorry, I'm going to interrupt you real quick. I know you have something to say. You want to yeah. fix it. It is one o'clock. And time for public comment. We will continue. Yeah, Colin. Uh, Next 15 minutes are, yeah, are for public comment. If there is anything in the, anyone? No, it's your time. Please let us know if you're here. Oh, Go ahead. Um, it looks like we got. Oh, OK, uh, I see. Uh, hi, X. Good morning. Oh, good after, afternoon. Go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> um, just wanted to come by um, and just express my thanks um, to the council. Um, publicly, um, I wanted to thank um, Will, John, Matt for helping us with our um, Halloween party. It was a huge success um, and we wouldn't have been able to um, get some of the things done um, without the help of um, some of our TSEC counselors. Um, and I also wanted to um, stop by and report to you all um, concerning the Black and African Student Roundtable um, that took place last night. Um, we had over 25 students in space with us, um, students represented at Metro, UCD, and CCD. We had officers from the African Student Union, as well um, at UCD and BSA um, at MSU. And so um, we have quite a few ideas um, and the concerns that we want to eventually bring to this council, something to put on your radar. Um, we have begun forming our committee for Black History Month. And so we want to extend an invitation to the council um, anyone who might want to um, collaborate with Black Era um, and our work with um, Black History Month, please let us know. Um, and then we also have some community service opportunities um, that are going to be taking place both in November and December. Um, and so um, we would love to have your participation as well. Um, just reach out to us. Um, I will drop our email in the chat. Myself and the other leadership team members are able to um, check that email. But yes, 
if you all need anything from us, please let us know. Oh, and I was like, there's one thing. Um, the coordinating of space. We are still in need of space, especially because we are growing. Um, and so some of the things that we want to look at um, specifically around student organizations is policy. So just wanted to throw that out there in space. Um, but that's everything, y'all. And thank you and have a good day. Thank you, X. Would you, just just a quick um, uh, request. Would you just like send us what like, why you envision Black History Month to be in campus, just so we we know what, like how we can help and who has like the caliber to go help you with us. If you just want to send us like a, a quick, um, yeah, sort of like why why you want to see that month. Okay, yeah, we will definitely um, send that over to you and. Um, yeah, we'll talk to you all soon and thank you and have a good meeting. Thank you. Yes, bye. Bye bye. Okay, is there anyone else? Okay, I'm gonna go back to Will and and then if someone has something else in public comment, we'll go back. What's up? Um, I just wanted to say, are we did we do already open floor announcements? Because I, I wanted to say yeah, something we're, quick. The whole thing was open floor announcements. Oh. Like we did, we did not have the usual structure because we didn't meet quorum until until now. Um, but now, now we do have quorum. Naomi is here. Um, yes, Mike. Before I keep going. <clears throat> so theoretically, because we do have quorum, we can technically vote on these these new accountability structure in place, right? Well, there will be time to discuss it. And yeah, the agendas. But like, here, real quickly, I motion to approve this agenda. You're motioning to approve the agenda? Yes. I second that. Okay. Let's vote. Everybody who agree? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? No. Okay. Any objections? Sweet. Um, okay. So, in that order, Naomi, I'm, I know you have your hand up. I'm also going to ask you to, to give your sustainability committee. And then after that is the uh, open for announcements. OK, cool. We, oh, hold on. Give me one sec, Naomi. I'm so sorry. There's, are you here for public comment here? OK, sweet. OK, sustainability um, updates first. Is that what you'd like? Yes. OK, so yeah, um, a shout out to Gabe. Uh, thank you for. Uh, picking up the slack on this end. Um, as you guys know, I had surgery this week and I'm still in a little bit of recovery, but uh, we're making it through. So uh, thank you again, Gabe, for um, helping with the cancellation of appointments and then just like taking notes because it's kind of hard for me right now. Um, but we did meet with uh, Tyrell Allen from the LGBTQIA plus center and then the um, Gabe also met with some folks from the health center and then got in contact with some people from the Phoenix Center as well. So we can start really gathering the data that we need to potentially set up um, an event to gather more data um, for the Aunt Flow project. Um, I am really proud of everything that Gabe has really put forth and like very thankful for Cassie for helping us with everything. Um, and we are on our way to making a resolution for, you know, getting some student incentive packages for some surveys and also developing an event around getting the input around the people this is going to affect the most. So, um, yeah, just I'm really proud of the work so far. So thank you so much, Gabe. Thank you. Shout out to Tyrell and Casey, um, Cassie, sorry. Um, and yeah, that's it. And then since it's open, do you want me to wait for open floor or do you want me to tell you my open floors? Let's officially transit. Is, is any, does anyone have any questions for the sustainability committee? Okay. So wait, is it for the sustainability committee? Okay. Uh, real quick, Naomi. Um, I'm also planning on reaching out to the Phoenix Center. I know um, for more PR reasons, but uh, maybe potentially we could get together with Matt and see if we can potentially table and help promote any um, or not promote resources from the Phoenix Center to the campus body. Would that be something that you'd be interested in? Yeah, I mean, I'd be very interested. Tyrell already said they are very open to um, helping promote other things for us and then we could help promote things for them. 
Um, I, I, well, I mean, it was particularly for that event, but I'm sure that if we spoke to them, they would be open to um, helping promote anything for them and, you know, us doing the same for them as well. So, yeah, I think it's just like going in and having the conversation and make sure we're doing it in an appropriate manner. But yeah, I'm, I'm down. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, of course. OK, anybody else on that? Oh. Is the sustainability committee related? Yes. Yes. Uh, hey, Naomi, um, any word from your co-chair on the sustainability committee? Uh, no, but to be fair, I also didn't reach out about, um, I'm pretty sure I put him in the meetings for us, but I could be really wrong, so don't quote me on that. Um, but like the calendar invite meetings, you know what I mean? Um, but as far as this one, this was just like a Gabe and I kind of thing because Gabe showed up and that's all I had the capacity for. So to be completely fair, I have not reached out to him and he has not reached out to me. And from my understanding, Cassie has not been in contact with him either. So I'm not really sure. I mean, I could send him an email. I probably should do that as a co-chair. Um, I just haven't had the capacity because honestly, sending an email right now is just very tedious and I hate doing anything on any level at this point because my hand is just very um stupid <laughs> so that's how I feel because like I'm not de dehabilitated I just it's stupid sorry um okay any more questions for the sustainability committee okay uh we have open we're gonna transition officially into open floor announcements Naomi I'm gonna have Will go is your hand up still for that? For yeah, just to, just as the placeholder, Will can one hundred percent go first. Okay, and then I have Gabe. So we're gonna do. We're gonna have Will, Naomi, and Gabe for open floor. Or Gabe, is that is yours a direct comment or question? No. Okay, sweet. No. Let's do it. Awesome. Um, real quick, it is going to be Veterans Day, and I myself being part of that group. Um, want to thank every student veteran on campus, regardless of what school they're part of. And not just students, but staff as well, right? Um, I think it's a it's an important thing to um, remember that a lot of veterans do go through a lot of stuff. And uh, I myself um, can understand those struggles on a personal level. And I just wanted to like publicly state that I am very thankful for all veterans out there. And actually today there will be an event at the Tivoli uh, honoring veterans and the Marine Corps uh, birthday and as well as uh, a veteran who was very close with the Student uh, Veterans Center here at MSU Denver who worked at the Tivoli but unfortunately passed away recently. So a lot of those, uh, not a lot, excuse me, all of those proceeds will go to help funding his uh, or covering the cost for his funeral. Um, so we would we would definitely love to have veterans and non veterans at the event, you know, and it'd be great to, you know, also destigmatize veterans um, in current. Uh, uh, ways of thinking of them right and just show that veterans are also regular people um but that that's all i got for my uh, open announcement thank you okay i'm gonna just pause because we i mean we're still in public comment and uh x just posted something uh they need the form for the use of storage space in tsac and they need to know how much Space is available for them to use as they have quite a bit of stuff. Uh, also, they want to talk about space on campus as a formal action item for TSEC for, for them to present on SACAP and for them to present on as they continue to think through solutions available and when at what time so they can do their best um, to ensure that they have what they need. OK, um, we will put them in our notes and we will make sure that you have uh, that form. Uh, is it okay if we send it to the Black Era email? X, the form. We're, we'll do that. We'll send it to the Black Era email. Okay. Um, I'm going to keep, yeah, we're going to keep going. Naomi? Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to point out to you all that. Um, 
to say thank you for checking in on me first and foremost. I really appreciate all of y'all that went ahead and did that. Um, and to express that uh, I may or may not be able to make a lot of TSAC these upcoming weeks because my physical therapist is really only available um, either in the evenings um, during the like Monday through Thursday weekday or like in the afternoons on Fridays or early mornings. So it really just kind of depends on what they have available, but I really have to prioritize my fingers right now. So um, just want to let you guys know, I may not be able to come to a couple of meetings here and there. As far as I'm scheduled out, I think the next two I should be fine, um, but I'll keep y'all posted as uh, as I know, but just know that like, I know if you guys would like me to um, just get some kind of documentation showing like I'm still advocating or if um you know just if there's anything that you need me to prove that like i'm still doing my job even though i can't show up to the meetings please let me know um i just don't want y'all to think that like i'm just ditching on tsac because you know i have a f messed up hand um so yeah just if there's anything i can do to reassure you or to make sure that i'm following the guidelines please let me know um, and I will uh, compromise with y'all and get a situation set up so you guys can have a verification of me doing my job or my okay. service to the school. Yeah, uh, I think Ree has a um, direct response to you. I do, and I don't remember what else I had my hand raised for, so forgive me for that. But I would say, Naomi, considering the current climate, it would be, I hate to ask you this, but it would be lovely to have that documentation if you can get that about your physical therapy and stuff. Certainly, we all trust you, but it's just helpful to to maintain equity with everyone, if that's all right. Yeah, yeah, no, that's totally fine. I can do that. Um, and I just want you all to know that like the main problem is that I would probably have to leave what it's looking like is that I would have to leave um, either right before TSEC starts or shortly after TSEC starts and then have to go to like be able to get there on time because it's at the Stedman Hawkman's place all over in Englewood. So it's like way on the other side of town. So um, that's that's the biggest issue. If it wasn't so far away, I wouldn't have to worry. Um, but I really like this facility because every time I've gotten PT here, they're like just really kind and understanding and it's just a good environment. So I really don't want to go somewhere else for that care. And so I won't. But yeah, I will definitely get like notes from my PT therapist um, if that's what y'all need. And yeah, just I, it, like I said, it won't happen for the for, like next couple of meetings. But when his next schedule came out, um, they just advised me to let y'all know that. And then because I don't have professors because I don't have school on Friday. So um, just to advise you all of that, um, that it may not be a guarantee that I have the current times that I do. So yeah, I can provide that. No problem. Awesome. Thank you, Naomi. Any any questions? Any no, direct comments? We're good. Okay, Gabe. Awesome. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, so I'm gonna give part of my say cab update right now to um for say cab. We just voted on, on two resolutions. Um one was was supporting um ASCP's event overall, like as a like, like a student group supporting it. And then the other one was us giving them five hundred dollars um to help with their event and functions and all that fun stuff. So that's something that we did, and we're also looking into, into seeing, um, you know, our new schedule for next semester and all that fun stuff. Uh, yeah, and then with and and regarding like SAB and stuff, we're planning to meet with with we have, we have our group. We're planning to meet with them to set up goals, um, questions, etc. Today, and yeah, cool. Thank you. Beautiful. Okay. Anybody else? On open announcements, Matt. Sorry. Um, since we do meet quorum, I might want to bring up the different meetings and stuff that I referenced earlier to see if we can't find representatives. Um, do you have, well, do you have schedules? Um, a couple of them I do, um, like the strategic review and refocus uh, meetings, November 30th and December 1st. Okay. Would you, because like, I think like right now it would be very quick for either of us to go commit on anything. All right. So could, could you send us an email with all, all right. of that and then we can talk about it next week? All right. Like maybe, maybe someone will like jump and um, volunteer. If not, then 
we'll discuss it in this meet next meeting, but I think we need to give people some time to think All about it. Right. We might be able to ask Dr. Simpkins some clarifying questions on the yeah. success launch team. Okay. Sounds good. Mike. Yeah, I was just going to add, like, it's probably not a good idea because we're just hearing about these things. I couldn't tell you what my schedule is for yeah. meeting at them, so I would suggest putting them on the agenda for next week. Okay. Um, oh, Faculty Senate, it's me. Um, so they're still doing a lot of readings and a lot of um, polishing with policy, and I think I don't have much to say about the policy because these are things that have been implemented, like, already. They're just polishing them. But I do have to say that it is very important that we're all putting our input out there. And I'm sorry, Bri, I haven't been able to like be very present with the accountability and I will work on that next week. But things like slip to the cracks when one is writing policy, even when you have 20 eyes looking at it. Um, so I just, I would like for us to work a little more on looking at the language and looking at how that looks like for veterans, like how does that look from a veteran perspective? Like just, yeah, making sure that we're that we're doing things accessible for everyone that is here and for everyone that is coming. Um, yes, it, and it was an example, the veteran thing. No, I know. Um, okay. I had a question about, oh, I forget what it's called, but you were talking with the staff about that hour period where it's black yes. blocked out. Okay, do you oh, know where I do that? have, I do have, I, no, update on that okay I'll yeah um so, oh hi re wait hold on i'm gonna have re if she had a direct comment then I will. Uh, well i do but i'm kind of confused about something with policy if if i can ask is that okay yeah please okay so i was on last year with tsac the university policy yeah. committee are you is that what you're on is that what you're talking about it's not with student affairs this is with in the office of general counsel so I, yeah. I'm in two, I'm in the, okay, good. yeah, I'm in the academic faculty, like policy. Yeah. And then on the on UPAC, which is the universe, the general Perfect. council one. So That's there, I there understand. Are okay, good. Because yeah. Megan keeps sending me the invites and I'm like, I'm sure Denny's in that. I'm just checking. So yeah. Thank you for that, honey. That's all. <laughs> oh, no, no, you're good. You're good. Okay. Um, Thanks. yeah. And, and that's woman. <laughs> Thanks, Ray. Um, on the community hour. So I'm very excited that Dr. Simpkins is coming because as I have talked to Dr. Goodnick, she they have asked like the questions like, is the student affairs office uh, involved in this? But I asked the student affairs office before and they said, well, we already had a survey and this like students weren't very responsive. So that's why I'm still pushing this. So because this is student led and I trust that we're gonna push that even further to hear from our students. Um, so the survey hasn't been sent out, so I'm still looking for a survey and I'm going to ask Dr. Sinkins some questions before I even send it to make sure that everybody is on the same page. And uh, as soon as I have that feedback from him, I'm going to answer back to faculty. Um, but because this is this is like a prototype for us to see how we're going to reach students. This has never done to have faculty involved in the process with TSEC. So it, yeah, everybody needs to be on the same page to make sure that we're not causing issues for other departments. Yeah. OK, sweet. Anybody else? OK. Uh, Dr. Brown, do you have any update? Yeah, I do. Because nobody else. Yeah, they're here. Okay. Yeah, but you already gave yours, right? For the trans transitional? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, so a couple of announcement uh, announcements I have are um, or updates. A while back, I had um, I think I mentioned to you all that it would be a good idea to have um, our associate director for Met Media and Tim Carroll come and talk to you all about media relations and interacting with the media and all of those pieces. I think this year has gone pretty smoothly, actually. Um, but I still think it's a good idea for us to connect with, uh, those folks and have them give you your, their perspective on, on those pieces, because I think you all will often be approached by not only met media, but external media sources as well, especially as there are a lot of, uh, 
global issues and things going on right now on college campuses. And so I wanted to bring that conversation back around and see if it makes sense to try to have them come before the semester ends or if we should just like kick that down the road to January. But I wanted to throw that out there if our agendas aren't full um, that I'd like to bring them in. If we don't by the end of the semester, then definitely in January. So wanted to ask that or just throw that out there for consideration. Um, and I can just work with Kenny in terms of getting them on the agenda if you all are OK with that. But wanted to remind you that that's probably important. Um, do you have any questions about that or comments? Matt and then Will. Yeah, so with that, um, would it be more beneficial to have them come talk to the whole council or just like the PR committee? I think the whole council. Right. I think so too. Yeah. I think um, so too. Cool. And then Will. Um, I was just curious about like dates or like when you were planning on having them here potentially like within this this month or next month or. I'm sorry, what did you say? The just, first part of what you said? Just dates, like when you oh, think they're going to stop by. Yeah, well, because we have fall break, so it would probably be after fall break, between fall break and um, the end of the semester. And I have to coordinate with them in both of their schedules, so that's the other thing, too. Thank you, Dr. Brown. I still have more. That was just one thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> we have more. Um, the other thing I wanted to share is Black History Month. Um, since that was mentioned, well, two things that are important for me to mention. I'm currently in an interim role again um, for the next few months with um, Dr. Nguyen's transition to CU. So I am serving in the interim role of director um, for CMEI for now. Um, and I'm also leading that search process. Um, but with that, um, now I'm like really in the weeds about a lot of the things going on, including things like Black History Month. Um, so appreciate X coming and sharing that with you all, but really wanna make sure that we're coordinating broadly too with university-wide events. There's already a calendar um, that has been started. So if you all are planning on supporting those efforts, just please look at the university calendar as well and knee dang. Um, is the one who was helping to lead that. So just wanted to offer that. The other thing I wanted to share is um, I sent an email yesterday as a follow-up um, to some things that we've been talking about every meeting. And I feel like I just wanted to make sure that I was following up in writing because not everyone has been here consistently at these meetings. Um, and I've been talking to both David and Nick um, and they, I've told them that y'all are doing a lot of really good work around the budget and I know constitution, we've been talking about it. Um, and so they offered that they could do an executive session with you all, um, to give you all input and feedback once you feel pretty good about where specifically, specifically the constitution is at, um, to offer some just guidance and advice, um, on that. So I wanted to, to make sure that I, I mentioned that. And then the other thing is, uh, what else? Committees. You all are asked to be on a ton of committees and work groups. <laughs> and there are 12 of you, um, theoretically, right, who are doing this work. I wanted to just make a suggestion or recommendation that you might consider thinking about, especially as you're continuing to get so many requests that it might be a good idea for you all to think about recruiting some students at large to sit on these committees as representatives of the student body so that it's not all falling on you all because I think we do have some very active students who would be interested and who would want to be a part of those committees so that there's student voice and that it's not all falling on everyone's shoulders here and that you expand your leadership. Um, it might be a good opportunity for succession planning and thinking about how you might engage students now in leadership activities and think, have them thinking about running for counselor positions in the very new, near future, because um, that's going to come up really quickly. So that was just a point of advice I wanted to offer because I see how stretched you all are. And it's the same people who are consistently volunteering to be on a lot of things. 
And I just, I'm seeing how it's wearing on you all. So I just wanted to offer that. The one thing I would also advise though, if you do do that, that may be part of that, um, having other students sitting on those committees is that you invite them to attend your TSAC meetings to provide updates so that there's some accountability there too and there's a flow of communication. That's all. I had a question about the Black History Month piece. Um, would you be able to supply us with the list of the departments that are working on this? Because from what I was looking at from HSI month, there was such a lack of advertising on any of the events. Um, I even got to the DEI team with the president's office who was supposedly running some of them and they didn't even have a flyer. Yes, I know. Um, I I do not have the flyer, but it's usually typically on the CMEI website. Every time there is a cultural history month, like right now we're doing Native Indigenous um, in collaboration with Desiree, who I also supervise. Um, CMEI does that with Desiree and Nisa, and so they're doing their events right now. But if you look at the CMEI website, that is where things are typically. But then a lot of the students um, and student orgs and student leadership, they do additional programming. So I just want to make sure that you all are coordinating and not duplicating or competing, you know, on the same days and doing various programs. But I would look at the CMEI website first, and if not, then connect with me um, on that because they collate the everyone's events and put them on there. Do you have any more updates for us? Yes. Yeah. No, thank you. That, no, thank you for the written emails. They definitely help. They definitely help. Um, okay, we are going to move to old business and we're going to move with community, community standards and norms with Re. So Re, the floor is yours. Well, thank you. Um, I am thinking I might share parts of this document because as um, if I can find it, hold on. As can you all see that or am I not sharing? Am I not you, sharing? We can see some, we can see the blank page, but we can't see like, any words or. Oh. Uh, oh, that's Kenny. Okay, never mind. Okay, Kenny, that's fine. You can share it. So Kenny. if we. I can we can roll through it together with Kenny sharing. That's fine. Sweet. So go ahead. What? Sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. <laughs> well, I just wanted you to know that there have been some edits in this document. I had sent everyone a link and not everyone has had time. You know, as Dr. Braun said, everyone has been stretched, you know, as far as possible. But what I'd like to say, the additions to what I originally included here, um, I'll just talk briefly about the additions. And if you look at number four, these others are all, you know, we wanted to change the name. Um, there was feedback that it stays a committee and not just, um, you know, facilitators. So I am suggesting, and this number can change, a maximum of this amount based on you know, time they spend working with us each year for the training work, which of course they do um, anyway, but also for additional facilitation efforts on their part. And you know, with Elise possibly, and I don't know the status of this taking over what they're doing um, with Thomas having gone, I know that it'll be new people um, that will be working with us too. But from what is proposed for this committee, we would involve them with any kind of actions that we need to take as a first step. So that's one thing to consider. This is not to be voted on this week though, I'm afraid for Mike and those of you. I wanted to bring this up to you, so then I'll have it in that format ready for an amendment to the constitution if, um, for next week's, the real full voting, okay? Is that all right? Mike says yes. Okay, so let's roll on down a little bit more. I, I just have sir. a quick question on yes. that 1,000. Mm -hmm. So that the 1,000 annually goes to requiring the assistance of the rest of the six annually for their work. What what exactly would those like this uh, is, what that grant go for? Well, and like I said, this is my number. I'm just throwing like yeah. pasta on the wall. So it's not um, anything in um, specifically it that I have in mind as yet, they have not talked to me about a number, 
it could be five hundred dollars, you know. But I just am envisioning that there would be ongoing work that you know we thought after last year we weren't going to need any kind of help in this area and so you know it was surprising to all of us i believe that we're having issues again and apparently this is something you know student governments continually have issues so i'm just trying to not take advantage of their kind services and find a way that we can ensure their assistance and continued involvement without taking advantage of them that's all okay Okay, so that, can, that number can be changed. We can get some more information to add to that number and uh, for what it represents. So you have a better mm -hmm. sense of what to vote on next week. I'll work on that too, okay? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I, it was not about like the specific number. It was more about like how, what is it for? Uh, it, yeah, what is it for? And like, what is the sure. process to get it to them? But yeah, that, that is a good point. I will put it in my notes and we'll, we'll talk about it. Thank you. Well, we can talk about that, and I'll also talk to um, our advisors about that, too, and get their feedback on that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we oh, talked Mike. about... Oh, go ahead. Sorry, Mike had a, Mike had a direct comment. To... Go, Mike. You hit it, Mike. Hello, Rhi. Um, so question, uh, well, sort of a broad statement of I think we can make this work. Um, I think you should just put an annual budget. So <clears throat> you will... This, is, this vote is going to coincide with our budget committee rewrite vote. Yeah. And the way that process will work out is like the first week we're going to do like investigation. Hey, what? And you have a seat on that committee now because you're a standing committee chair. You you technically have stake to a budget as well. Um, you haven't needed one until now, but if you think you need a budget, we can talk about it. Um, if you want to just put like an, like I wouldn't say put a specific number in there. I would mm -hmm. keep it broad and then like or leave it to like the budget committee to determine that number because we'll work together to kind of get you a budget you need, you know? OK, that makes sense. And like you said, it might not even be touched and it can roll back to the pot to be used in another way. There we go. Exactly. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry, we. Sure. So this part that is up now um, is something that I brought up before when we first discussed this um, two weeks ago. So this hasn't changed as yet, but I encourage you to read over this. And when I, I will include these parts in a more formal document of course to be voted upon next week but these are just all the elements that are going to make up the soup that will be this amendment so the process is starts with this community concern circle facilitated by restorative justice so you can move on down a little bit further so i have added here um, the fact that our advisors have a voice in a counselor accountability. And that is stated through MSU Denver, the university and CMEI. And, you know, they are, they're important in our, our staying with our compliance with our constitution, bylaws, and all ordinances, right? They help us with our development. They organize our training. I also believe um, they have a role in, as well as, you know, our stipends and how those work. So I've added that wording in my document. I think Kenny might have, I don't know. I don't see it in here in this, but I've added it just in the last hour in here too. But that's a note that will be in this document too, because it's important to know that, you know, they will be advising this accountability committee. Then I have mentioned, of course, and this was here before, there are formal inter interventions in our constitution, as well as that we reference the student code of conduct, HR, you know, and those will be a second step toward assistance. And I think I stopped that after assistance in, in my new update. And then um, when we feel there is non-compliance, and in my document, I say, where the accountability committee believes there has been full non-compliance by one or more counselors, following those measures taken by the committee toward facilitating restorative justice and reconciliation efforts, the next steps will encompass. And then we have our series of steps, A, B, C, D, E, F, and it's a progression. And this was, like I said, I'm really happy to take comments and feedback editing in this document. Everyone can edit in here um, and add your comments. But this was, um, I, a kind of a outline, calendared outline of what I felt felt was fair. 
trying to link to the Constitution about the two-thirds vote. And what I felt was after a month where a counselor is still going to be required to put forth effort as a, as a counselor and attend meetings, have a voice, but not a vote in that time. And then we have a vote again in a month to either maintain the, the have the reinstatement, if you see there, continue an unpaid suspension or immediate expulsion. And you know, I was just trying to come to some sort of process that has um, alternative structure. If things weren't going to work, what would happen next? Because we don't just go back to everything's fine after you haven't been involved in a number of months and you've done nothing. We need to also be mindful that we are still required to do our best and work together for the benefit of the students. So, I have but, uh, Mike. Mike has a direct question for you. Is that OK? Of course. Yeah. Go, Mike. So I love this. Um, Two things. Um, Re I'll send you kind of like the um, formatting for this. So like, okay. um, it's 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 super easy. You and I can meet, and I can we can reformat it just to make it look like up to kind of what are the guidelines look like. There's a okay. certain format to it. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, um, I love the step by step process. I think like there should be something put in there that like, hey, I mean, if members aren't showing up to vote, then what's the point of taking away their vote? I mean, I think it should be it's either stipend suspension or that, depending on the consequence, depending on what's going on per se. OK, so that's just my thoughts there. Yeah. Happy to take um, those and then happy to have everybody. Oh, someone else have some comments too, please. Yeah, Matt, Matt has something and then uh, and Dr. Barone as well. Uh, I'm going to have. Uh, go ahead, Dr. Barone. Re. I just yes, wanted to ask if we could, instead of using the word expulsion, that word mm -hmm. is super scary, especially when we're talking about school um, okay. or be, okay. you know, um, can we use the term removal from the Absolutely. council like consistently throughout the document? Because the word expulsion infers that they're, they are like ejected from the university and that's like language that's used in the code of conduct so i i would really try to steer clear of using language that could mean something different so i think removal from the council and being really specific is one thing i just see right offhand um and then yeah i'll see what others comments are but i might have other things to add okay that sounds great awesome and then matt mm -hmm. I just wanted to pose a question to this. Um, would it be worth adding something to this document around um, something like counselors should utilize this process before external processes, um, such as the like petitions for removal? Because I think that would be mm. more for the public. This would be more for internal. I, I, can I say something on that, Reed? Please. Um, I think that would have to do something with like the reforming the elections code because if we are going to codify our election, I mean the elections code into the constitution, then there is nothing we can do about people just having a petition. Um so yeah, yeah that that would be something to to look at. Uh Matt, Matt has a direct comment. Yeah, so with that, I don't think it's about removing like that process from the election code, but maybe putting, and it could be semi vagueish language, but that this should be the first step for any council members, but not taking away the petition side more for like the people. So like right. a student could start a petition and do whatever within our election code, but as a counselor, we should be at least encouraged at the very least to take this step before jumping to more drastic measures. I, I had agree. underneath the process, it said as a first step, but I've added as an internal first step for managing disharmony among council members. And then um, I agree about the elections code because I think that was go going to be revisited anyway. 
Yeah, but I, I also, and in that sense, like, is, is there any like, I don't, I don't know, it, will there be uh, like a boundary on how much like a counselor can influence like outside decisions because. You know, we have counselors that are or that are organized and then they don't necessarily have to start the process, but they're definitely influencing other students. Um, so I don't I don't know that if I have Mike too. Mike wants to say something. Um, I think the elections code thing is the next step. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, did they I mean, I don't know who's going to work on it, but like or what committee would work on it. But like. The I think the accountability and then the um, budget was the first two steps to kind of get guardrail set up and then we can revisit eventually hopefully by the end of semester revisit the elections code i don't think much needs to be changed in there it just needs to be codified but i mean if we're voting to codify i have a few changes i would like to make to it yeah sure but i would like i just want to encourage everyone to please get into this document and add your notes and edits i believe track changes are still on i'll make sure it is so we can you know track all this and um, and then I'll work to and thank you for sending me a structure for this mic so that I can have this for next week. And then if we want to slip on down, if that's OK, to the norms, because I've gotten a couple updates to that, too. I just have um, Dr. Barone real quick. She has something. To oh, say. sorry. Go ahead, please. I was just going to also, since you're talking about the election code, I think something else that is really important for you all to um, think about or consider as we're hiring the new elections team, whoever that is, um, which Armando and I have been talking about, he's already working on that. Um, just making sure that that process or those protocols are consistent and in alignment with all of these other pieces, right? That that are being presented and, and codified. But the other thing too, that we've run into in previous years and something I just wanna like, how can I say this? I think that sometimes there can be a conflict of interest, right? Like when the council themselves are like developing the election codes and election processes in the past, we've really tried to have the elections team who is often like a subcommittee or external to the existing council, be the ones to really help develop that and modify that so that there isn't a conflict of interest. Because if you all are rerunning for your positions next year, but then you're also taking on the responsibility of making edits and um, changes to the election code, do you see how that could be perceived as a potential conflict of interest? So that's just yep. something we've run into in the past that I just wanted to raise. It doesn't mean we have to like figure it out now. We have some time, but the elections team has primarily been the one to um, work on that, just so you yep. all know. At least that's what it's been like in the past for those reasons. You're going to say something, Mike? Is I I because just because we are a little short on time. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, you're good. Just just because we're a little short on time, I think because we have agreed that the elections code is the next step. Uh, if we could sort of like pause this conversation for the elections code into more, um, oh my gosh, I lost my train of thought. Into more uh, particular things and, and and more specific things. Let's just hold it up for a minute so we can keep going with her. Is that okay? Do you still, are you good with that? Sweet, okay, Re, go ahead. Well, just lastly, because I absolutely want everyone to please add their comments and thoughts and ideas in this document. The norms that we collected, a couple new ones were added. Um, and um, addition to cultivating respect for others' perspectives, and actively try strive to repair rather than undermine their well-being and relationships, which I love. And that came from Armando. And I think it's really important to be thinking of others as we try to work together. And it, you know, it's really hard to work with other people who have different values and different beliefs. And it's it's really, you know, our responsibility to make sure we try to do that for each other, for this university and all the students. So thank you, that's it. I just want you to look through this. I think um, unless you feel it should be a separate piece to the accountability committee, I can take the norms out and we can vote on those separately. Otherwise, I may include this with this for next week. So 
happy to take anyone's guidance on that. And I appreciate your time. Thank you, Ree. Thank you for your work. Sure. Okay. So yeah, please go into the into the document. And um. Okay, we have ten minutes before Dr. Simpkins shows up. Do you guys want to take the floor on the budget procedures? Is that what we're doing? Yeah. It's yeah. Not okay. Issue. So. <clears throat> Um, this has been sent out to everyone multiple times. This is just the budget procedures. Um, and you can, you can interject if this is all right. Our plan is to send the official amendment out Tuesday. That gives everyone a weekend and a day to give us any extra kind of feedback. And then our goal is to have this, we'll do some discussion, any amendments can be thrown into this, but we're going to vote on it next week. So, um, I'm kind of preparing the amendment document as we speak um, with Re. And Re, once I'm done preparing this, I'll send it over to you. We can fight over if your amendment, if it were Amendment 10 or your Amendment 10. Um, but <laughs> okay. So, but um, that's it's a substantive document. Um, I think we're going to meet at some point next week just to finalize it and go over anything. So, if you have any final thoughts, send them in by Tuesday. That's the current date. You with that? Cool. And we'll vote on this Friday. So um, that's all we have. Um, there's a lot in here. We're not going to go over it in this meeting. Just that's just kind of an announcement. So. Oh, we have 10 minutes until Dr. Simpkins shows up. Um, we can do a bathroom break, a recovery break. Um, and I just Reese noted said, I'm not going to be able to stay. Yes, I'm so sorry. No, it's OK. Thank you for showing up. Of course, always. Mike. Oh, Reed, um, we can fight over. Do you want to be Amendment 12 or 13? I love number 13. OK, OK, we'll be number 12, you'll be 13. <laughs> OK, I, just, I had to look up my uh, Roman alphabet here real, or Roman numbers real quick, so. <laughs> um, just real quick. What? Everything that we have going on with the Constitution and we're speaking of bringing up more students. Uh, it is long. Um, and bringing up more like students to sort of uh, create that leadership uh, chain. Um, I would like to go ahead and, and I'll, of course, like we'll create the resolution and we'll have a vote and I will also bring it up for uh, input. But I would like to have a committee with like us, like some of us and then some students from outside the school. I mean, from the school to patch up the Constitution. It's OK, you don't have to say anything. Would it Hello? be a, a weird? Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Would it be a weird idea to talk to faculty Senate about students in classes that they know of who are really engaged and fired up, who then we could approach? No, I think I think that's a good like idea. That? I think that's a good idea. I think let me get a let me get a resolution written and like send it for feedback and okay, yeah, and we'll work on it. Okay, cool, sweet. Thank you, Ray. Mm -hmm. Okay, Dr. Simpkins is here. Do you need a minute to settle? You're good. Taylor's coming. Okay, okay. I am gonna just do. Yeah, yeah. We're doing a potty break until two. Dr. Simpkins, I don't get to hear your amazing talk, and so I'm going to have to watch the recording later. I apologize. I don't know what to say. But I adore you. Look, I'm coming in from the sky. I did. That was like, that was like you were descending from heaven there. He's on the stairway to heaven. I You're love on it. campus I somewhere. Where are you? I'm in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Oh, that's not on campus. No. Okay. I wish I was on campus, but sadly, this is my last work trip here. It's my fourth one in the last two months. So I apologize that I have to go to another meeting now and miss this inspiring, elevating talk. I will but I will you. watch. I'll watch the recording. I will forgive you. Thank you, sir. And try to live up to your expectations. <laughs> Thank you.
and everybody, y'all take care and look for my um, amendment come next week. Please, please get in there and make changes. Love you. Bye. Bye, Reed. Thank you.
Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we, we're back to not having quorum, guys. So no voting anymore. Um, He's allergic to Okay, we are back from our break. Um, we have Dr. Simpkins and Dr. Taylor. No, yes, in progress, in progress, Doctor in waiting. Well, Dr. Preuss, <laughs> he's he, he he has some heavy expectations of our doctorates, you know. Sure. Yeah, he does. <laughs> um, sweet. So, Director of Student Affairs, Dr. Simkins, you have the floor. Sounds good. Um, thanks for having me in. I don't want to repeat anything that the other Will in the room has already shared. So, I do have. Will the PowerPoint that Marie and I used at the Board of Trustees retreat? Okay. I was just going to walk through folks through the student success launch, mm -hmm. sort of where we are, the high level stuff, unless you've already shared that with them. Um, not specifics, no. Okay. Um, uh, but the co chairs are aware of the two or one or two people that you that we need. need. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's. Um, Quickly go through the launch. Where is it? Click that and click. Yeah. All right. So um, where we are right now is uh, we have identified seven uh, focus areas for the student success launch, and we have working groups for each of those areas. And again, the student success launch is, is predicated on the deans doing a lot of work in the colleges around increasing retention and graduation rates for students and clearing obstacles. And for this implementation team, what can we do at the university level to impact and support what the deans are doing um, at their level? So we've identified those focus areas. Uh, we use this framework OKR. Are folks familiar with objectives and key results? Yes. All right, great. Um, from now, uh, until the end of the semester, we'll be just doing check in. So I think next week or the week after we have a check in with all the working groups to get an update. Um, and then in December, we'll be setting uh, KRs for the spring. So how did we pick these seven areas? So we looked at each of the deans um, 30, 60, 90 day plans. And again, the ultimate goals are increasing retention, increasing completion and increasing postgraduate outcomes. So helping more students get jobs or get to grad school or whatever, wherever they want to go afterwards. So we reviewed all their plans, identified some common themes that started to emerge from the, the work that the six of them are doing. Then on October 2nd, uh, Will, no, Will was not there, Kristen was there. Um, we had this sort of ideating conversation about what are all the barriers and obstacles that we've heard students talk about, things like, it takes too long for the major change form to be to show up in banner, things like that, right? Um, we ended up with four whiteboards worth of lists of stuff we knew we needed to work on and fix. So we compared that to the 30, 60, 90 and came up with this heat map of these seven um, areas. We also looked at what, what do we work on first? So our hope is whatever we do first is going to have a cascading impact, meaning that it will sort of very quickly increase retention. As it increases retention, it increases our revenue coming into the institution, which means we have more resources to support other things later on. So for instance, 
we need more academic advisors. It takes way too long for y'all to get appointments. We don't have the resources to do that. If we can do some things right now to increase retention, we can little by little try to add academic advisors as we go. So these are our seven um, priority areas. Um, I'll walk you through each one really quickly, and then we'll talk about the student engagement one, because that's where the most updates are um, right now or where we need your support. So experiential major maps are documents and or virtual uh, tools, artifacts, that basically tell you as a student, Denny, what's your major? Political, political science. So Denny's starting uh, her career in political science uh, as a freshman. It says, OK, you know, you should take a service learning class in your sophomore year so that you can get ready for an internship your junior year. That's the right timing of those. We want to make sure that you're attending this networking event in your first year. So it's what activities should a student do at what point in their four years, four years in quotes, with us to stay on um, track to graduate and to plan for after graduation. So it's to put all those resources together. And our, our goals on this one is uh, ultimately by next spring, every department at the undergraduate open house will use the same template for their experiential major maps. Um, so we're building up to that. In advising and advising technology, our ultimate goal is to have a consistent, seamless advising experience. So if you change your major, you know how to use your advisor because it's the same process, it's the same system, even if it's a different person. Right now we're looking at what's the current advising process so we can understand how it varies from program to program and school to school. We're looking at um, identifying two early wins on things that we can do to strengthen the advising system. Right. So your holistic advising experience, what what are some easy things we could do right off the bat? Um, there is a proposal right now to adopt artificial intelligence technology to support some basic advising, right? Like um, what classes count for general electives in this program, things like that. Um, and then uh, really trying to create uh, more resources for faculty advisors. How many of you have an official faculty advisor? OK, so that's that's what we're talking about, right? Not all programs do it. Some programs do it really well. Um, and uh, we want to streamline that faculty advising process. Also, um, Navigate, which is the tool you use to schedule your advising appointments. We want full use of that. There's a whole bunch of its capabilities that we're just not using right now including a pretty cool referral system that a faculty member, if Mike said, you know, hey, Professor Will, um, I'm struggling with paying my rent and I'm worried about being evicted. I, not knowing what resources to offer, could say like, OK, Michael Warner needs eviction resources, eviction support resources. Click. It sends a note to Abby Kell. Abby Kell connects with Mike, says, hey, your faculty member made a connection. Here's some resources. How can I support you? Just streamlines that whole process. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Like, on on faculty advisors, how does that or, or will that affect faculty workload? It's um, yes and no. So right now, faculty advising is considered part of teaching under their teaching service research, the tenure paradigm. OK, so it's actually part of what they should be doing in the classroom and also how they should be using office hours. Every faculty member, tenure track faculty member should be doing, I believe it's five office hours a week. OK, so it shouldn't. But in departments where we have too few professional advisors and want to supplement with faculty advisors, it would. OK, and that department would have to figure out what that looks like, whether it's a course release for faculty that have an advising load or something. But we're just getting into that. There's, okay. there's no options on the table right now. OK, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, Mike. But so. Yeah, yep. Mike, Mike. <laughs> Sorry, hello, everybody. Um, so what was it? Oh, yes, I had this question of the retreat, but I don't believe I got to ask it. Um, there is it's uh, in relation to the experimental learning roadmap. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things that we get to do when we are uh, when we are uh, 
registering for classes. Yeah. And all these things are in different locations that are easy to find. Yeah. So that is my main critique of the website is like, if I want to register for classes, well, I need to go to a different place to figure out what classes I want. I need to oh, go different. I need, yes. I have a solution for you. You do. Is it all in one place? Linktree? The Linktree of every, uh, all this? For? No. One, one click registration. Oh, I think so. I, this, is, this is great. Here's what it. happens. Uh, it's actually not really one click. It's maybe two click <laughs> registration. I was waiting for you to say that. You're waiting, right? It's not really one click. It's two click. Um, so there are three technologies that if we link together, we'll essentially do what you've just said. So it's the Navigate, Academic Planner, which is how you and your advisor set up like a, you're going to take these classes this semester, these classes that semester, right? And Banner for registration. That's what you register through right now. So what we're working toward, which I think will be spring 25, we're already doing spring 24. It may be as early as summer 24 registration piloting. I'm not, I have to go back and check that. But you would essentially go into navigate and click your course thing. And it would say, based on your academic plan that you've set up with your advisor, here are the next five classes you should take. And if you don't like that it's an eight o'clock class, here are the other sections of that class on different days of the week. You can also put in your work schedule and it'll automatically not tell you about classes that are in times where you're supposed to be working. And then if the schedule looks good, you click boom, it takes you over to the banner page. It's already pre-populated and you check out and you're registered. So it, it should get rid of this phenomenon of thousands of students needing to see advisors just to find out what the next three classes they need to take are. It should. So we're still playing with it right now. Will's going to get a demo of what this looks like. Um, and I should have a link to a YouTube video from Arapaho, I think. Didn't Connie send us one? Um, maybe in Teams, but I'd have to check. I didn't I didn't see an email particularly. I'll send, a, I'll send a, the video of what this looks like at another school so you can see sort of the functionality of it. It's not as clean as what you're talking about, but it's a whole lot better than where we are right now. We've almost got to have like three screens up comparing notes and then integrating and yeah. But it is dependent on students having an academic plan built with their advisors. So part of our strategy in this one is getting um, 200 students by the end of this fall academic plans as a pilot and then next year something like 5,000. Is he allowed to speak? Okay. Whenever Danny, yes, Danny says I'm allowed to. I love this. Um, this is great. These, are, these, are, these. This is this is lovely. Um, if anything, the only thing I'd like add on to it is like usually, I mean, like maybe some clear instructions on financial aid because yeah. within this process, I mean, it's. I think you could solve a few birds with one stone if like you can. Like, yeah. and I say there's a link to the financial aid page because I know it's different, but like, um, yeah. I, I I I often find myself like ping-ponging between the websites, which this is fixed, but I can see the ping-pong effect being between this new process and financial aid. Mm -hmm. So if you could incorporate like an easier way to get like, oh no, how much money I'll need or stuff like that, because mm -hmm. once you check out, that's fine, but you still have to pay for the class. So yeah. that's just my other like thought on that. It's a, okay, how do we cross-list financial aid? With yeah. But otherwise, this is great. Too bad I'll be calm by then, but this would be great. <laughs> I, oh, yeah, I do have to get a master's. Never mind. Yeah, I, might, I, might, I might. You can't get rid of it easily. Um, all right. So then uh, another one is looking at policies that might actually be obstacles. So does anybody in this room right now know that you have a hold on your registration? So there's something that prevents. OK, so we're going to do an analysis of all those different registration holds. Are they still worth having a hold? Some of them are financial holds. Some of them are like, you can't register until you see an advisor. Some of them are conduct. Some of them are immunizations, we're orientation holds. So we're going to look at the full list, see if we can eliminate some of those. But we're also going to go through things like the curriculum design, the way general studies is structured. Um, here's an easy one. Did you know that you are required to take at least 40 credits of upper division classes? Except Classes usually come in multiples of three. So a lot of students get 
they take 39 upper division courses and they get to the point where they're about to graduate and they're like, I need an upper division one credit course. They change the policy, right? Yeah. We yes. Time. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So that's one that's just going through right now. So there are some ways the minor requirement was another one that we've uh, the provost eliminated. Um, so our goal is to try to just get some of those boundaries out of the way. Um, this one, uh, exploratory and undeclared students and then meta majors, it's actually two topics that we've merged because we think they're collective. So our exploratory students, those are uh, typically first and second year students, freshmen, sophomores, who don't know what they want their major to be. And their advisors are in the C2 hub. Undeclared students, it's a bad name. But they're typically pre-social work, pre-nursing, pre-education, pre-theater. There's one more, maybe. Maybe, maybe. So there are, there are all these programs where you have to get your prerequisites done before they'll officially admit you into the program. But both of those two categories have the lowest retention rates at the university. They're about 50%, lower than 50%, in fact. Yeah, well. Yeah. Which two? Exploratory students and undeclared students. Um, so we've got to have a plan that helps exploratory students find their major faster um, and a way to track and advise them. Now, meta majors is a, are, are folks familiar with this concept? You are because you're in the room. Okay, meta majors are, if you don't know what uh, major to do, the institution offers 12 generic areas that you think like you were doing political science, but maybe you were also interested in anthropology, maybe you were also interested in sociology, the social sciences. So maybe we have a meta major that's the social sciences, where in your first 30 to 60 credits, you're taking courses across the landscape of those um, programs that are all gonna count for whatever major you, are, you um, later on declare so that it's a more structured exploration of your options that doesn't delay you if you change your major. Yeah. So right now I'm currently going through sort of similar, maybe some new ones to this. So I was originally a political science major, history minor, mm -hmm. and with 120 credits, um, I have 21 credits left and mm -hmm. I could just do whatever I want with them to fulfill the 120 credits. Uh, even when I changed to double major. So now I'm double majoring with political science and history. Um, I don't know, maybe maybe there, because I've, I've, they're, they're, that's the case with a lot of students that they have this yep. a random amount of credits. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit of a different issue. So there there are, um, later on, I think this, this student success launch will do what's called a curricular alignment project. Okay. Because unfortunately right now, Actually, no, it's exactly what you're talking about. So meta majors help say like the poli sci, history, sociology, anthropology majors should not be that different. Right. Right. They've got ultimately different upper level, upper division requirements, but maybe the lower division requirements are, are pretty standard so that if you do switch between one of them, the, all the credits count and they're all going to go with you and you're not going to graduate with 140, 150 credits. Um, because right now, when I look at our curriculum, like if you're at 65 credits and you change your major, you're probably losing at least 20 to 25 of those, meaning they'll still be on your transcript, but you can't use them for anything. I also think it would be important. Like I know we have uh, four social science uh, majors. I know we have a cross uh, cross communication class required for all of us, but I I would like to see and also a requirement to, with um, something that requires like minor, minority studies in the yeah. requirements like that. So, so we do have in our general studies, um, the I think it's now called social justice. OK, uh, they just changed it from multicultural global to something. Else, right, Genevieve? Yeah. So uh, and I think it's a three credit requirement for every mm -hmm. student. So we're we're in that space, but I think you're right that there's other areas where we need to think more critically about what's in the curriculum and how it stabilizes across. So if you're, um, Alejandro, what's what's your major? OK, thank you. That's a good one. So computer engineering, maybe you decide that you want to go cybersecurity. 
maybe you decide you want to go business analytics or computer information systems. Those are across two separate colleges. So some of that is in ACE, some of that is in business. And so right now there's really no mechanism so that if we know that lots of students are making those major changes, to keep them, to, to not harm them. So if you changed your major right now, you probably have to start you know, back as a, almost like a sophomore, right? right. To make progress. Um, so the idea of this, of smushing these two topics together, is that meta majors likely would be a good solution for exploratory students to just guide them down a pathway and probably good for all of us so that if you're thinking like you know my nephew was in um, mechanical engineering he couldn't pass calculus so there has to be some other class some other major that maybe he could go to acknowledging that lots of people can't pass calculus or organic chemistry or whatever those gateway courses are. So meta majors. All right. Um, we're looking at the processes that y'all use to change your major or withdraw from all your classes. And our goal for both of these is to prevent you from making wrong decisions and make it easier when it's the right decision. So the major change form is different in every department and every school, and it takes them a long time to go through the registrar's office. We're going to make that easier. There's also no process that says Will's about to withdraw from his last class. Do we know why? Have we reached out and said, like, what's going on? Is it a financial thing? Is it something going on with a health issue? Lots of students probably withdraw, drop out, and we have resources that could likely help them and keep them connected. And so we're looking at what that process could look like. Um, both from a technology angle and a advising angle. And then student engagement. This is the big one. Um, so uh, the real story of this one is that uh, this is community hour. Um, so you all are aware it just blew up um, and we did not have um, the faculty support to do it and we had to pull it back to take another look at it. So we're, this group will be co-led by Taylor and Christy Duran, who's the Director of Undergraduate Research. If you haven't met her, she's awesome. Um, and we'll have representatives from TSAC, Council Chairs, Faculty Senate, and Staff Senate. And there's really um, three things that we're asking this group to do. Number one, MSU Denver has participated in the National Survey of Student Engagement for decades, and none of us have seen the data because they don't share it. Like the, the people who've been supporting the survey haven't really helped educate the community on what the data says. What the data says, it's first years and, so and seniors. Those are the two populations we measure. We are significantly statistically lower in our reported levels of engagement almost across the board. Everything from, have you talked to a faculty member outside of class about your career options, to do you hang out with your peers and talk about the issues of the day? Are you engaging with folks who have different identities than yourself? Are you engaging in student organizations? We're, we're just low, even compared to institutions that are just like us. Access, HSI, commuter, urban, right? So, Goal one is to, we, we just got the 2023 Nessie results from the spring. Some of you may have taken it, is to get those results out there. Make sure people know what they are. Goal two is to identify a couple, maybe five metrics from the Nessie. So it's 120 questions, maybe. Five of those questions that we want to directly try to impact raising those levels of engagement. So more time for you to engage with somebody or something by 2020 by 2030 for the strategic plan. And then goal three, um, in addition to sort of defining student engagement and what does it mean for a commuter campus, um, to take another look at community hour. And the two timelines that I want you to know, March 15th, the working group will give the provost and I their recommendations on the way forward with community hour, if there is one. And that would be for a spring 2025 community hour because the schedule 
faculty start inputting their spring schedules in August into Banner so that you can register now. So that by the end of the spring semester, this coming spring semester, the president would say this is what we're doing. This is the way forward on that. So I actually have something going on with community hour. OK, um, I made a survey and I, I understand I did reach out to Angelica Moreno and I do understand that there was a survey before. I do think there was a lot of things missing on this survey. It was more about like, are you aware? How do you feel? Um, the survey that I've developed asks students. First of all, like, what do they think about the concept? Second, I do tell them that the, if, if it's. Depending on the time, it would push classes. Yeah. And how would that affect their ability to take classes or register? Or um, I also ask if they would like to see more academic or uh, just social resources. Um, the survey hasn't been sent out. Okay. Um, I they talk talk to Dr. Goodnick about having faculty involved for them to have this the students involved. Uh, it has not again. It has not been sent out. I'm, I was waiting for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so we, I want to be involved in this. I hope the rest of my, like the counselors want to join. Sounds like in you it. just volunteered yourself to be the TSEC representative. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but I, I agree. I, I have a really close relationship with my faculty members in the yeah. political science department. Uh, so I, I, I would like to be involved in this and. Um, we'll we'll get of course like we'll get the results to you. Yeah. ASAP. I think it'd be great actually if the working group, since it is Taylor Christie and then the shared governance groups could work with you on the survey because there may be additional questions that they're thinking about or even as individuals they're thinking about that they want to try to use one tool to to gauge and so even getting them to give you feedback on that the would be survey, lovely. I think that'd be great. Okay. So can we put your name down as the representative? Let's talk about time. OK, well, okay. we don't know yet. We'll work around your schedule. OK, right? Correct. I have to make that. He's the co-chair. Okay. No. OK, then then yeah, let's do that. I, is, I just I will that meet the needs of the rest of the council. I will be there. Yes. Are you forcing a Good job, Denny. I'm not forcing a vote. There's no quorum. Thank you. All right. Thank you for saying that. cool. <laughs> Denny, we will reach out to you. All right. Thanks. Um. So I, again, I said like uh, our next meeting, I believe, is the 14th of November, 28th of November. That's just where we do check ins with working group members. Then by uh, early December, we'll set um, some sense of what our spring work is going to look like. We're also talking with Dr. Benitez about bringing in um, a lot of the DEI work. So Seal of Excellencia um, prepping for that for 2026. The Black Student Success Plan that we just got a draft report on through the trustees. Um, the um, uh, equity gaps work that student affairs is working on in terms of uh, BIPOC and first gen students retention rates and graduation rates. And there's a couple of others, but having one group that's really um, sees the full picture uh, in that space. So that's the student success launch. Lots going on. Will's been great. He speaks. He shows up. I appreciate him. Thank you. Welcome. Um, is there anything else you want me to chime in on that you've got questions about what's going on? OK. Nope. All right. We appreciate you. Matthew did a great job at Cabinet um, yesterday. Um, I'll just say like. Uh, you have picked up on the fact that this institution um, doesn't do a great job of remembering that student government and TSAC is part of the shared governance community at the institution. And you do a nice job of holding us accountable for that. Know that I'm your accomplice in that work and I get very angry when people leave you off lists. Um, so let's keep working together just to make sure that you're centered in the conversations. Um, and we are going to, based on the conversation we had, um, we're working with the finance office to put together a time where TSEC, um, we can present to you on the fee policy and the fee process so that we're all working from the same um, information um, and getting feedback too. There's always an opportunity to adjust policy and adjust process. Um, yes, sir.
on that note, I think it's feet and referendum process because I think those two are going to go hand in hand. Okay. Um, because that's where, and I feel I feel really bad for your assistant because your assistant's been trying to pin this down for like a month at this point, okay. and she sent an email this morning. I'm so sorry. I need we'll we'll get back to you on it. Um, but yeah, so the referendum process at the end. There, see if there's any um ancient documents of policy referring because we don't have them, and we assume yeah. we all have to have them. If not, that's a problem. So okay. So, and but yes, Denny and Matthew, have you all met with the president? Do you have regular meetings? Okay, I'm. I will reach out to you. I think maybe the four of us should get together. Has she been to one of these meetings? No. Um. If you would like her to come to one of your meetings, I would say reach out to her and invite her and give her a couple of topics you want to talk about with her. Um, and um, but I will also talk to her about a more intimate conversation. Awesome. Thank you all for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we're just going to close the meeting because there is no note. We cannot vote unless nobody has anything else. Sweet. Thank you, guys.